They're sapien. It is one o'clock and we do have quorum. You may proceed when you are ready. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Uh, I should say good afternoon, members of the MAG Transit Committee. Got it. Uh, as a reminder, please turn off your mics. I'm sorry, please turn on your mics and clearly state your name before speaking to ensure that members of the audience can hear you. And please mute your mics when not speaking to eliminate feedback noise. As a reminder, phone attendees will need to press six, star six to unmute themselves. And because this is a virtual meeting, a roll call vote will be taken for each action item on the agenda. We will now begin the meeting with the roll call of all members. Anna. Thank you, Chair Sapien. I will start the roll call, starting with Sarah Allred, proxy for ADOT today. Here. Thank you. Uh, Matt Dudley. Here, City of Avondale. Thank you. Uh, Sean Banda, Buckeye. Jason Crampton, City of Chandler. Here. Thank you. Jose Macias, El Mirage. Jeff Graves with Florence. Here. Thank you. Don Coomer with Grick. Here. Thank you. Nathan Williams with Gilbert. Here. Thank you. Vice Chair Link with Glendale. Here. Thank you. Percy McMurdy with Goodyear. Here. Thank you. Tony Flood with Maricopa. Reed Kempton with McDot. Here. Thank you. Jody Sorrell with Mesa. Jody, I do see you uh, in the list of participants. Just want to make sure that you are, in fact, on the call. Yes, Hannah. As I as you called my name, a bunch of boxes filled up my screen that wouldn't let me unmute. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just wanted to confirm. Uh, William Beloit with Peoria. Here. Thank you. Nina Arandondo, Pinal County. Here. Thank you. Heather Wilkie, Queen Creek. Here. Thank you. Salvatore LaPuma, SRP MIC. Ratna Corpella with yeah. Scottsdale. Thank you. Kristen Taylor with Surprise. Here. Here, sorry, this is Kristen. Thank you. Uh, Sam Stevenson with Tempe, proxy Here. for Eric Iverson. Here. Thank you. Gabe Elias Tolleson. Here. Thank you. Joe Gregory, proxy for Carol Catcher's side uh, with Valley Metro. Present. Thank you. Um, Grant Anderson with Youngtown. Here. Thank you. And last but not least, Chair Sapien with Phoenix. Present and accounted for. Thank you so much. Is there anyone that I missed? Uh, yeah, Jose from El Mirage. Uh, my Zoom meeting wanted an update before I like to log in, so I'm here. Great, thank you so much. Is there anyone else? All right, thank you so much. Chair, you may proceed. Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, thank you everybody for being here today on this beautiful Arizona first week of Super Bowl activities Monday. Um, 
We will now move to item number two, call to the audience. An opportunity for public comment on the agenda was provided ahead of the meeting. Magstaff, have we received any public comments? Yes, Chair Sapien, we have. One moment while I pull that up. Yes, uh, Chair Sapien, we have a comment from uh, Bradley Mark Haas. I urge the committee to add back commuter rail onto 400E. This will also help with the Phoenix to Buckeye passenger rail process. Stop building roads when it is cheaper in the long run to do commuter and passenger rail. Thanks, and I look forward to hearing from you. End comment. Perfect. Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, item number three, uh, Transportation Planning Program Manager's Report. Audra Kester Thomas with MAG will provide a report on activities of general interest. Audra. Thank you, Chairman Sabian, members of the Transit Committee. Just a few items for you today. First, I'd like to welcome William Beloit from the City of Peoria as our newest member of Transit Committee. Please join me in welcoming William uh, to this wonderful group. And then second, I wanted to make the committee aware that on December 29th, the Census Bureau released its tabular list of 2020 urbanized areas, and it includes two name changes uh, for our urbanized areas here in the core. Um, the new updated names are the Phoenix Mesa Scottsdale UZA and the West Phoenix Goodyear Avondale UZA. I also want to make aware to the committee that we have a new UZA in our planning area for the city of Maricopa. Uh, with the new boundary maps expected soon, we will also be following up here at MAG with the U.S. Census Bureau to learn more about the implications of a few of these changes. So more to come on that front. Chairman Sapien, that completes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions offline. Thank you so much, Audra. Anyone have any questions at this time? Knowing that there's more information coming as there usually is with the feds. All right, moving on to item number four. Next item is approval of the December 5th, 2022 Transit Committee meeting minutes. Do any members of the committee have questions or corrections on the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Christine from Goodyear, I move to approve. And Nina Arredondo. Arredondo, second. Did you get that, Hannah? We got a first from Christine and a, who was the second, please? Well, I, I heard a second from Nina Arredondo and Grant Anderson, but I'm not sure who came in first on that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure either, so you could choose whichever one. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Hannah will do a roll call vote. Please indicate how you vote on the minutes. Thank you, Chair. I will call the roll starting with Sarah Allred. I'm gonna abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Thank you. Matt Dudley. Aye. Thank you. Sean Banda. Jason Crampton. Aye. Thank you. Jose Macias. Aye. Thank you. Jeff Graves. Aye. Thank you. Don Coomer. Approve. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Aye. Thank you. Vice Chair Link. Aye. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Thank you. Reed Kempton? Aye. Thank you. Jody Sorrell? Aye. Thank you. William Beloit? I was not at the previous meeting, so I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Nina Arandondo? Aye. Thank you. Heather Wilkie? Aye. 
Thank you. Ratna Korpela. Aye. Thank you. Kristen Taylor. Aye. Thank you. Sam Stevenson. Aye. Thank you. Gabe Elias. Aye. Thank you. Joe Gregory. Aye. Thank you. Grant Anderson. Aye. Thank you. And Chair Sapien. Aye. Thank you. Are there any members that I missed? Thank you so much, everybody. With a motion and a second, the motion passes. Moving on to item number five, transit asset management regional targets. Item number five on the agenda will be presented by Ted Brown, MAG Transportation Performance Program Manager. And this is on the agenda for action. Ted, I believe you have a presentation for us. Take it away. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pleased to be here today to present our regional transit asset management targets to you. If I get the next slide. Now, since these only come through once a year, I thought a quick refresher might be in order. So MAP 21 kicked off the asset management requirements. It outlined that all recipients of Chapter 53 federal funds that own, manage, or operate capital assets need to have a TAM plan. Uh, it further laid out the details of what needs to be in that plan, including the people, processes, and outcomes. Here in the MAG region, we don't need to develop a full-blown regional TAM plan, uh, but we do need to set regional TAM targets, which is the focus of this presentation today. Next slide, please. For the purposes of TAM, we're split into Tier 1 and Tier 2 agencies. Now, in our region, we have four Tier 1 agencies who are responsible for developing and carrying out their own TAM plans. It's Valley Metro RPTA, Valley Metro Rail, City of Phoenix, and City of Tempe. Uh, you can see how the tiers are determined through the graphic on the right. Now, the tier two agencies aren't completely off the hook. They can elect to develop their own TAM plans or participate in a group TAM plan. Next slide, please. And lastly, TAM requires that we set and measure performance targets annually in four separate categories. We have rolling stock and equipment, which is measured in the age of the asset in question. And then we have facilities and infrastructure, which are rated on a five point scale. Uh, the chart on the right is an example of guidance we get from the FTA. Uh, it's the useful life benchmarks for various types of transit vehicles. Now, before I move on to the next slide, I just want to reiterate that I have the privilege here to be presenting the hard work of others. Uh, my colleagues at the Tier 1 transit agencies are really the ones in the trenches. I couldn't do this without Wendy and Eric at Valley Metro, Carl at City of Phoenix, and uh, Tony and Sam at City of Tempe. Uh, and with that, on to the targets. Next slide, please. Presented here are the, the fiscal year 23 TAM targets. To help provide you some context, we're presenting the percentages as well as the actual numbers. Uh, now I understand this chart is really a lot to take in all at once, but the general take here is that we are in pretty good shape overall. One of the new things we're bringing to the committee this year is some longitudinal tracking of these metrics. If I could get the next slide. So you can see here how our percentages are changing. Uh, from last year, green shows an improved target and red shows where we have increased our percentage. You'll note a few interesting tidbits, uh, one under light rail where we have improved our target and another under equipment, specifically the 10-year auto section where we see a pretty stark increase. Uh, once again, the percentages are not the full story. So we've also included a comparison of the actual numbers in question. If I get the next slide. And you can see now, if we look at those two numbers again, our light rail target has improved because we've retired one light rail vehicle that's no longer fit for service. Also in that 10 year um, category, we can see that really it's only two of 11 vehicles in that category that are going to exceed their useful life benchmark, which in the grand scale of our 1300 vehicles so is really nothing despite that initial 18% looking a little scary. Next slide, please. And as always, I like to finish up with uh, our next steps or action items. Uh, we have a TAM working group consisting of all the tier one agencies that meets every six months, a process we intend to continue moving forward. That group has already done some outstanding work bringing these targets into congruence and will continue to refine the process. Uh, we'll be back next year to bring you these targets once again. When we do come back, we'll have three years worth of longitudinal data to look at. And if all goes well, we hope to be incorporating known upgrades and upcoming transit vehicle replacements to kind of help fill out the rest of this transit asset management picture for you. Next slide, please. This chair, this item is on the agenda today for action. That completes my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you so much, Ted, for the presentation and the information uh, and the regional coordination that goes on every year on this. It's a really big deal. Uh, are there any questions or comments from any members of the committee? If 
Hearing none, do we have a motion on the item? I'll move to approve as Jason, City of Chandler. Thank you, Jason. Do we have a second? This is Sean from City of Buckeye, second. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Hannah, you wanna take a roll call vote? Thank you, Chair. I'll start the roll, starting with Sarah Allred. Approved. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Matt Dudley. Aye. Thank you. Sean Banda. Aye. Thank you. Jason Crampton. Aye. Thank you. Jose Macias. Aye. Thank you. Jeff Graves. Aye. Thank you. Don Coomer. Approve. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Approve. Thank you, Vice Chair Link. Aye. Thank you, Christine McMurdy. Aye. Thank you, Reed Kempton. Aye. Thank you, Jody Sorrell. Aye. Thank you, William Beloit. Aye. Thank you, Nina Arandado. Aye. Thank you, Heather Wilkie. Aye. Thank you, Salvatore Lapuma. Ratna Corpella. Aye. Thank you, Kristen Taylor. Sam Stevenson. Aye. Thank you, Gabe Elias. Aye. Thank you, Joe Gregory. Aye. Thank you, Grant Anderson. Aye. Thank you, Chair Sapien. Aye. Thank you. Are there any members that I missed? Hearing none. Sorry, this Chair is Kristen again. I vote aye. Thank you, Kristen. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for attending today and hanging on for that item. Very, very important. Uh, next up, um, I have the pleasure of presenting on item number six on the agenda. Uh, this is for information and discussion. Uh, so Hannah's going to bring up a presentation we put together to give everyone an, an update on what we have relative to transit and Super Bowl. Next slide, please. All right. So as you can see there, we have the uh, the new wrap that went out on light rail uh, a couple days ago. Really, really big deal for our region. Um, next slide. So uh, what you're going to see here is kind of an amalgam of regional information. Uh, City of Phoenix, together with Valley Metro and many other agencies, have been working together since December of 21. Yes, December of 21. Uh, on this planning, uh, because we know how much planning uh, needs to go into these things. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of background of what we've been discussing and give you a high level overview of what we have planned from a transit perspective, uh, both in the Phoenix area and the Glendale area. So one of the things we want to do, of course, is focus on efficient delivery of transit service. Uh, the big events that have come to the region over the years, we have seen record numbers of rail ridership, especially little bumps in um, uh, bus service uh, ridership from time to time, but uh, rail is the one that does a heavy lift uh, historically for these events. So we want to plan for uh, addressing that increase in travel demand because we know it's going to happen. And the other thing that I'm proud to say is that we have a lot of lessons learned from previous large scale events. So we have a lot of staff here in Glendale at Valley Metro that have been staffing these events, uh, you know, for uh, I'm not ashamed to say it, decades uh, from the opening of light rail to the previous Super Bowl, uh, Final Four, uh, NCAA champ game several years back. We have a lot of folks who have been planning and staffing these events, uh, both in our operations control center, the city's emergency operations center, uh, and boots on the ground, little, literally out in the field. So you rest assured you have a lot of experience from our multiple regional partners uh, 
Mr. Vice Chair Link included, you know, just uh, planning for these things, asking questions, identifying resources, and putting plans together. Next slide. So from a bus perspective, uh, one of the big things we've been working on are detours and bus stop relocations. Uh, we know it's going to happen for the most part on a planned basis, but we also know we have to be uh, reactive to some ad hoc things. I think the last Super Bowl, if I remember correctly, like two days before the event, we got told that uh, the Tonight Show was going to be at the Orpheum Theater in Adams, and we had to change some of our plans. So things like that happen. Uh, but, you know, on the bus side, we're, we're agile, we're mobile. Um, and on the rail side, a uh, uh, lot of boots on the ground that kind of respond to those type of things. Uh, we also have a Glendale request for service um, on game day only on Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to expand service on Route 60, 70, and 83 uh, at Glendale's request so that we can connect folks uh, between rail and the Glendale park and ride and along those major streets. Uh, so 83rd Avenue, uh, Bethany Home, and Glendale. So we're going to run that uh, extra service, and that's been bid out, and we're preparing for that. Um, the other heavy lift for us is staging buses in the downtown area. We'll be working closely with Valley Metro. Uh, we have a list of all of the events that are going on in the downtown area, both NFL sanctioned and otherwise. You may have heard there's a concert series at Footprint Center. There's Kevin Hart has two shows in and uh, two shows uh, two nights in a row. There's the Hans Park uh, concert series and events up there. Uh, and a lot of stuff in between, both in Glendale and Phoenix and Scottsdale and Tempe. So uh, we have a list of all these huge events and rail staff is going to be ready to send out uh, a higher number of uh, trains and consists and hours. And uh, I'll get in into that a little bit uh, later on, but uh, extra service all the way around. But the stage buses will be downtown to help with that e egress, especially if uh, one thing that we have learned is that if rail gets uh, uh, reaches capacity, instead of having people just sit there, uh, we will load them onto multiple buses until we can move them to different uh, spots at the end of the lines. So Phoenix will be going from the downtown area west uh, to the Dunlap station. Valley Metro will ha be handling uh, to the east to the multiple uh, park and rides and platforms uh, in the east direction. A uh, reminder that the local bus hours of operation as, are as you see them there on the screen, but reminder uh, that 11 p.m. means for the most part, that's when the last trip's gonna be leaving the end of line. So we'll, we will have bus service well past that 11 o'clock mark, some of them quite after, uh, but, but that's what we tell the public, you know, plan accordingly, because these are more or less your hours of service, recognizing that it's gonna depart at those hours and you're gonna get to your des destination well after that. Next slide. On the light rail schedule, as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be increased service between February 8th and 12th. Uh, Valley Metro is going to try to put out three car consists as much as they can at 15 and 20 minute frequencies, depending on the time of day and the events that we know are happening. Uh, special event trains will be inserted at event egress, just like they do for d backs games and ASU games, et cetera. They are, you know, a well-oiled well machine. And if they know the let out time, uh, they will be uh, having cars there. And again, we have boots in the ground. We have um, Phoenix police, we have TSA, and we have the transit unit that will have staff all throughout the transit environment to let us know when those events are egressing. So very well uh, prepared there. And they will ex uh, be extending service till 2 a.m. as well, because we know some events may go a little later. So they're preparing the full rail fleet uh, for operations this week. And they will be posting mobile maintenance and technicians and cleaners throughout the uh, alignment just to respond to those, you know, those things that may happen because we're going to be seeing a lot of people. Next slide. Uh, we are encouraging on a regional perspective to uh, tell folks to park at a parking ride, ride and come downtown on light rail. Uh, traffic downtown, there'll be a lot of closures, a lot of street restrictions. Um, and there will be some private uh, parking lot owners that I'm sure will be asking for a premium uh, in terms of charging, uh, but our convention center has also consolidated a lot of that information uh, on the Phoenix website for folks where you can uh, have an app and you can look at parking lot um, capacities and pricing and availability. Uh, but most importantly, we are telling people park 
and come downtown on light rail. So we have all of these parking rides along the alignment that you all are well aware of. And I think altogether, these are over 5,000 spaces at any given time. So we have plenty of capacity and, you know, as we all know, our parking rides are free. Um, next slide. From a safety and security perspective, uh, I can tell you for the past more than one year, this has been uh, the focus. We've been working closely with uh, regional police and fire, not just Phoenix, uh, TSA, FBI, DPS, every acronym you can think of, uh, are going to have staff and emergency operations centers uh, patrolling all the major streets, the transit environment. We have it. We Phoenix have a transit unit that's going to be out there in full force. Uh, we have canine dogs that are going to be doing the sweeps at the rail yards before the vehicles uh, leave the yard, as well as at uh, one of the downtown platforms. We found that to be a good practice. Um, let people know that we're out there taking care of the transit environment. And then myself and other staff, as well as Valley Metro and contractor staff, are going to be um, we're going to be staffing the called the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center. And the thing to know there is that it's it's a multi-agency center. So it's not just Phoenix agencies that are staffing this. It is multiple uh, local, county, state, and federal agencies working together in one big room, just like we did last time. It's you know a bunch of people sitting at a desk with their computers and phones ready to go with huge screens uh, up front, just watching the environment and taking calls. Uh, and logging everything that might be going and ready to respond to whatever might pop up. Next slide. From a communication standpoint, um, Valley Metro is engaging volunteer ambassadors. I know that training uh, has already happened. So there's going to be folks throughout the transit environment just asking, answering questions. Anything from which direction do I go to or how do I buy a pass or how late the service run. Uh, it's going to be uh, a whole host of people from different cities uh, along the alignment that are hosting that. Uh, they are also extending customer service hours to make sure folks can reach someone at the other, uh, at the end of line uh, when they have a question. And then a lot, a lot of visitor communications going on. I know that uh, Hillary Foos and her team at Valley Metro are putting out the maps and pocket guides that have a lot of FAQs and uh, maps with little uh, flags on them to tell you, you know, where bus stops are, where light rail stops are, fair information, hours of info, uh, hours of operation for different things. Very, very useful. But of course, we also know, you know, web pages and digital, digital communications is where most folks are going to go to. So uh, Twitter, Valley Metro websites, City of Phoenix website, departmental websites have been pushing out a lot of information for weeks now. Uh, and that will only increase in the weeks to come for all of the cities that are going to have events, not just Phoenix. Um, the Valley Metro app, I'm sure you all have heard, but just a reminder, there was mobile fare now as of February 1st. So the app that we've been using to track and plan your transit trips, you can now buy fare on there. You can buy one trip or you can buy an all-day pass. That is something we've been testing for a while. Uh, so that is live as of February 1st, and we wanted to make sure we had it ready to go for visitors for this whole week. We've been having onboard vehicle announcements to let people know to plan their trip uh, because there will likely be some detours here and there where you may your your standard bus stop may be at a different location. We'll have signage there, but just letting people know that there's events going on. Um, and then uh, the how to ride and why wayfinding guide. We're putting some information out at bus stops. Um, downtown Phoenix ambassadors are passing out information and answering questions. So a lot of interaction. And actually, I saw. I think it was Channel 3 had a, a piece the other day that they talked about uh, visitor reaction so far and all the information that we've put out so far has been very well received. Next slide. Uh, construction, you all know that light rail construction for Northwest Extension and South Central has been heavy for the past few years, uh, but just know that right now the downtown area is for the most part buttoned up, they're calling it. So there's no heavy construction. There's no open pits. It looks clean and beautiful and buttoned up for the most part. Uh, so South Central, as you know, is uh, halfway done. So a lot of the traffic control uh, barriers and signage have been removed from the downtown area. Sidewalks are open, new ADA ramps, curbing, uh, really good, really nice uh, looking stuff. Uh, and then after February 14th, uh, 
the work will go back to being concentrated on the trackway in the downtown area, as well as continue on uh, Central Avenue south of downtown. Next slide. Uh, there's a bunch of websites you can visit yourself uh, to see the events going on. But as I mentioned earlier, there's concerts, there's paid and free, uh, and there's NFL sanctioned events going on in the downtown area. If you go to that website, azsuperbowl.com has all the information you need from parking to tickets to the app information, et cetera. Uh, so very robust amount of digital information, I will tell you. Next slide. And then the last thing we want to talk about, uh, this came to fruition recently. So if you download the NFL One Pass app, this is similar to the existing agreement that Valley Metro has with a footprint center where your ticket to a footprint center event is also your pass uh, for light rail. Uh, Phoenix Convention Center, Downtown Phoenix Partnership, and a handful of other downtown vendors uh, are sponsoring a similar effort for the uh, NFL experience at Convention Center as well as for the free uh, events and concert series at Hans Park. So if you download this uh, NFL One Pass app in the reward section, there's a QR code that you can use for yourself or for a group. It can be you or multiple people, so you don't all have to download it. But that QR code will be your fare when you ride light rail to either of those two sites that aren't already included in the Footprint Center agreement. Uh, so really big deal. There's been some behind the scenes work going on for that. Uh, and we thank uh, Valley Metro for their leadership and partnership in doing that. Next slide. So that's all I got. I'm happy to answer any questions. I think uh, Joe from Valley Metro is also online if anyone has any questions. But that's kind of a summary of information we've been putting out over the past couple of months to inform City Council, um, our Citizen Transportation Commission, and uh, Valley Metro Board on all of the stuff we've been doing from a transit perspective to plan for this huge event. And I went to lunch earlier and I will tell you, people are already here downtown meandering about. So happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Uh, Commissioner, this is Jose from La Mirage. Yes, sir. Quick question, um, the uh, the NFL One app, um, it's free, right? If you If you have the app, uh, but are we getting some kind of money for that on the back end? Yes. So similar to the footprint center agreement that Valley Metro's had for several years, uh, there is an estimated uh, revenue share that um, the city of Phoenix convention center, uh, downtown Phoenix partnership, uh, the NFL host committee and many downtown uh, vendors, uh, they basically pulled their money slash did a little bit of fundraising uh, to pay for that fair revenue loss that's estimated to happen uh, if we were to make it free. So yes, it is being paid for. Thank you, that's great to hear. Absolutely, thank you for the question. Anyone else? I know a lot of you have been in some of those meetings, so thank you for your support over the past more than one year. And I know that Tempe, Glendale, Scottsdale, many of you have large events. Uh, I wanted to go to the Shack DJ show, but I think tickets are $1,200, so you won't see me there. All right, if there's no more questions, uh, moving on, we'll, uh, item number seven, are there any requests by a committee member for a future agenda item? If not, item number eight, are there any updates or announcements by committee members? Hearing none, um, next meeting date, a reminder uh, that next meeting is scheduled for Monday, March 6th at 1 p.m. via teleconference. And unless anyone has any further comments or questions, we can adjourn at 1.30.